Thank you for the invitation. My name is Liane Leverenz. Uh, I work at the German Aerospace Center here in uh, Bonn. I'm a national contact point for Marie Skodowska Curie Action. It's a European, it's part of a European, European funding program, Horizon 2020. And my institution in general has nothing to do uh, with uh, the contact point um, I'm working for. The national contact points for Horizon 2020 and Marie Skodowska Curie Actions are located all over Europe. So every European country has a national contact point for Marie Skodowska Curie Action. And they are located at different um, uh, sectors or areas in, uh, in Europe and in Germany. Um, the Federal Ministry of Research and Education has decided to put all the national contact points at different research organizations in Germany. So um, my uh, employer is the DLR, um, but my work is, my daily work is with uh, the um, funding program of the European Union. Horizon 2020 is the funding program that runs from 2014 to 2020. 75 billion euro are in that funding program for the next years until 2020. And it's uh, divided into the different funding schemes and funding parts. We have excellent signs at once. Uh, we uh, the one pillar and another pillar is industrial leadership and a third pillar, big pillar, is societal challenges. And the Commission decided to structure this big, huge funding program into different pillars according to the drivers behind this um, um, funding program of the European Union. In fact, it's the biggest funding program in the world. And the first pillar, excellent science, is science-driven, so research-driven, which is quite important. I will come back to it later. The second pillar is industrial-driven, so industry-driven. The driver is the innovation, the industry, the companies, um, the non-academic sector. And the last pillar, societal challenges, this is policy-driven. That means this is the pillar where the European Union can put certain topics into funding programs, into calls for funding, into projects where they think um, this is uh, an important part for the European Union, for example, climate change, um, um, yeah, different, uh, different topics like um, terrorism, etc. That is um, um, important um, um, parts that are concerning the world today. So the worst pillar is, first pillar is um, ex excellent science, the first pillar, not the worst. Um, science driven means bottom up. So there are funding programs in it that um, are coming from the researchers themselves. So you can kind of come up in this pillar with some ideas, some projects that come from you. So there is nothing given from the Commission, from the European Union, saying this is um, a challenge Europe is facing and we have to focus on some certain points of climate change. It's bottom up. You can come up with any idea and with any project in that pillar that's um, important for your research. It's excellence driven, so the criteria is excellence, excellence of the uh, research project and excellence of the project itself and the researcher, of course. Marie Skodowska Curie is one part, 6.5 billion, over 6.5 billion euro are within that uh, part of Horizon 2020. And one key word is mobility. Mobility is essential for Marie Skodowska Curie actions. Different funding schemes are included in Marie Skodowska Curie actions. And it, the main point is to help researchers in the development of their career. So from an early stage after uh, getting an academic degree up to um, supporting uh, doctoral um, 
um, development doctoral programs and um, PhD um, researchers. It's an innovative research training. It funds all areas. So as I said, bottom up, you can kind of come up with any uh, project idea in any kind of uh, field of research. Uh, mobility is one key issue. As the name Marie Skłodowska Curie says, uh, it's, um, Marie Skłodowska Curie was a Polish researcher moving from Poland to Paris to not only for family reasons but also to um, conduct her research. Um, so that's the name giver of this program, Marie Skłodowska Curie. Um, it's transnational mobility as one key element but also one point is not only to, um, to support uh, academic research, but also to exchange, to, to, to boost the exchange between academic and non-academic sector um, in different projects. Marie Skodowska Curie actions, there are um, a few uh, of them. There are innovative training networks, it's a collaboration network funding where um, institutions can apply and they can um, they can host different uh, researchers, early stage, stage researchers that are um, after their, um, their um, academic degree and starting a doctoral uh, program for example. We have individual fellowships which uh, support individual researchers um, where one a researcher can apply together with a host institution for a certain project. We have research and innovation staff exchange as a funding line called RISE and this concerns in particular the um, exchange between the academic and non-academic sector or the international exchange. We have co-fund of programs um, where the European Union in Marie Skodowska Curie co-funds already existing national projects and programs. And we have the Researchers' Night, um, that is um, the support for an event, an annual event at universities or in certain regions where um, they support a night for research, as it says. I will focus today on individual fellowships as one funding line within Marie Skłodowska Curie Action. Um, as I said, it's bottom up. You can come up with any idea in it and you have to be an experienced researcher, which means um, most of the applicants have a doctoral degree already or at least four years of research experience in their field of research. And the deadline is always the deadline of submission. We just had the last deadline in September and the next one will be in September next year. So as you heard before, you have to be well prepared in order to apply for a funding scheme and a position. And um, I think um, it's a good time now to prepare for Marie Skodowska Curie Action if you're interested um, when the funding deadline is in September 2017. And up to this year you should have at least four years of research experience as full-time equivalent or a doctoral, uh, a doctoral degree in order to be applicable for the individual fellowships. There are two types of individual fellowships within this part of the funding scheme Marie Skodowska Curie. We have the European fellowships called EF and the GF, the global fellowships. And there are two different principles for the European fellowships. Um, people from outside Europe and from Europe can come to an institution here in Europe for one year or two years to perform and conduct the research and to get trained to become um, a, a, a researcher and to, to, to develop their research career. We have global fellowship um, where fellows from Europe move to any parts in the world for one or two years and then return to Europe. 
And this uh, program um, has a duration of two to three years. So these are, these are the two different funding lines within Marie skłodowska curie individual fellowships. The European fellowships, as I said, one to two years, you need to have a host institution here in Europe, which means, which means in the European Union or an associated country to this framework program, Horizon 2020, that can be Norway, Iceland, uh, Israel, etc. There's a list of countries that, that are associated and they are located in Europe. Um, the host institution has to be active in research and innovation. It can be a university, it can be a company, it can be an industrial partner, an NGO, a small and medium enterprise, it doesn't matter. But this institution has to be active in research and innovation in order to um, employ the researcher and uh, give them the opportunity for their research. The researcher can be of any nationality. So nationality doesn't matter in this European fellowship, but there's one rule, as I said, mobility is an important point in Marie Skodowska Curie, and you as a researcher must not have resided or carried out your main activity in the country of your host institution for more than 12 years in the previous three years prior to the call. So that means Next year in September, you have to check when you want to apply with a German institution, for example, you should not have resided or carried out your research in Germany uh, for the last 12 months in the previous three years. If so, you have to find another institution in another European country. If not, you can apply with a German institution. The submission and evaluation of uh, your project will be done in eight different panels scientific panels, depending on your field of research. So um, this project program is open for any kind of uh, um, um, research idea, but the evaluation will be in different panels, um, um, depending on your field of research. We have in this European Fellowship special panels also, for example, for people who had career breaks, um, for example, because uh, they were pregnant uh, after a child was born, or um, if, you went, if you've been to working at a uh, company and did not perform research for a certain time, and you want to come back to, um, to research, there's a separate panel and a specific application for that. If you want to come back to Europe, if you're a re European uh, citizen and you want to return to, to Europe after some time there's another panel or for example a new panel if you are looking for a career perspective in a non-academic sector for example and you want to find some uh, research experiences uh, in non-academic academic sectors and um, there's a specific panel for it. The Global Fellowship, the second uh, part of individual fellowship uh, where you have to go outside Europe, you have to be uh, flexible, so go outside Europe for 12 to 24 months, outside Europe, and then you have to come back to Europe, uh, uh, and it's mandatory to return to your host institution, for example, in Europe, in, in Germany. Um, there's one condition, it's not all open for all researchers, but you have to be an experienced researcher with a member state nationality or an associated country nationality, or you have to be a long-term resident. That means you have uh, at least a stayed five consecutive years in Europe. And uh, yeah, of course you have to prove it by sending your CV with the application. There you have two host institutions, the host institution here in Europe, and then the institution uh, you go to for one or two years. Um, in most cases, I think 90, 95% it's a uh, partner organization in the US, but any other country outside Europe is possible. The mobility rule applies to the third country. That means, for example, if you're deciding to go to the US, um, the rule is that in the last three years you shouldn't have stayed there for at least 12 months. 
same submission and evaluation uh, criteria apply in eight different panels. Um, um, is uh, the, the, the proposal evaluated? So mobility uh, means also mobility for a certain time, not only for two years at one institution, but when you're, for example, uh, applying for a European um, fellowship, um, it's not mandatory that you stay for the whole duration of two years at one institution. You can also decide for a secondment if it's interesting for you and your research project. Um, you can go to another institution within Europe, in the member states or an associated country. It can be in an industrial uh, area or environment or in academia. Um, and uh, the duration of uh, the secondment option depends on the duration of your uh, fellowship um, in whole. Funding, one very interesting part you get unit costs um, as a funding. That means it's not actual funding where you just budget what uh, the, the research will cost for the next two or three years, but you will get unit costs for you, for your um, salary as a, unit, as a researcher, and uh, of course uh, a unit cost uh, to cover the expenses uh, of your institution, of your host institution. As you see, uh, you get a uh, researcher unit cost per month. You get a living allowance, a mobility allowance, allowing you to, to travel um, home for, uh, for some time, and a family allowance if you have children or if you are married. This is not the full amount you will get. It has to be deducted uh, from social, uh, social charges, etc. So it's the gross amount, not the net amount of your salary and the institutional cost for trainings, research, networking, which is an essential part of Marie Skodowska career action to develop and the, the, the um, research career of uh, you as a researcher. If you are interested in Marie Skodowska career actions, not only the individual fellowship, but also the other parts of Marie Skodowska career, you can call or contact us at any time. If you need some more information, we have a website. It's in German, unfortunately, but the Commission also has a website um, dedicated to Marie Skodowska Curie Action, and it's in English. We have a newsletter, and if you're interested in any other part of Horizon 2020, um, you can also contact us. Thank you for your attention.